Yuan is a beautiful Chinese character originally used to describe the graceful posture of women. However, it is believed that Chinese internet celebrities have completely destroyed this word. Approximately three years ago, these internet celebrities were exposed online for eagerly participating in group purchases to flaunt wealth, attaching themselves to luxurious elements like Bulgari Hotel luxury suites, Ritz Carlton Hotel afternoon teas, and Ferrari supercars. They took turns visiting these luxurious spots to take beautiful photos for social media, living a fake socialite lifestyle. To falsely flaunt their wealth, they even resorted to group purchases of secondhand stockings, breaking beyond the average person's imagination in the Yuan universe of China. However, this was just version 1.0 of China's Yuan universe. It has now evolved to version 2.0. They seem to have found inspiration for new photo spots, temples. In the solemn and sacred halls of temples, females usually dress in tight, plain-colored dresses with long, flowing black hair and delicate makeup, elegantly and devoutly kneel or sit cross-legged, showcasing a bowed head in prayer or a side profile. Some light incense with Buddhist scriptures spread out, contouring their bodies into an S-shape, gently gathering their hair, posing in ways that suggest copying scriptures, sipping tea, or eating vegetarian meals. And even more outrageous, wearing slit cassocks with straps, exposing their legs and shoulders, posing with designer bags as if meditating. Photos are a must, and a few pictures can be slowly compiled into a few minutes of video, accompanied by copied inspirational Zen text, conveying a pure and unworldly temperament. This is a stark contrast to flaunting wealth. Their persona shines brightly, shared on Chinese platforms like Douyin, Kuaishou, Weibo, and Xiaohongshu, simply waiting for likes to come knocking. This type of internet celebrity is known as Buddha Yuan or Buddha Beauties. On nearly all social media platforms, they widely share their stories of suffering from thyroid cancer, thyroid nodules, breast cancer, depression, etc., but the accompanying photos clearly show they haven't forgotten to wear heavy makeup even in the hospital, making people sigh at how beautiful they are despite suffering from illness, eliciting sympathy from fans. After a few days of showcasing, they claim to have recovered, proudly making a victory sign and sharing their post-surgery recovery tips. However, this process inevitably involves promoting products to their followers, recommending scar repair patches, health supplements, and claiming these products have been personally tested with excellent results. This type of internet celebrity is called illness yuan or illness beauty. In response to these phenomena, a doctor from a top-tier hospital in Beijing stated, Normally, patients are not allowed to bring complex cosmetics to public hospitals, at most face wash or soap. Medicine is a sacred discipline and hospitals are places for saving lives and helping the injured. These individuals seeking attention, traffic, followers, and sales claim to suffer from serious illnesses while wearing makeup for photos in hospitals, are disrespectful to the medical field and hospitals, and disrespectful to real patients enduring pain. Illness beauty promoting uncertified products to consumers or fellow patients is tantamount to false advertising. There are some draped in extravagant gowns with flowing radiant skirts that appear as if they are about to walk the red carpet at a Cannes film festival. However, it seems there might have been a mistake in navigation as they end up in a vegetable market instead. Amid the surroundings of pork and vegetables, they ignore the sidelong glances of market aunties, strutting down the narrow market aisles as if on a fashion runway, creating a surreal scene. This type is known as market beauty. Interestingly, what really popularized market beauty was a vegetable market opened in Shanghai by the renowned luxury brand Prada. Yes, you heard right. The international luxury brand opened a vegetable market. Naturally, being a luxury brand, Prada instantly attracted long queues filled with people coming to see the spectacle. The market was decorated with Prada logos everywhere though the items sold were ordinary vegetables and fruits at non-luxury prices. However, one difference was that after purchasing from the Prada vegetable market, customers received their goods wrapped in paper prominently featuring the Prada logo, 
thus attracting many who are extremely fond of vanity. Internet celebrities smelling the scent of luxury and wealth flocked to the market to check in and ride the wave of popularity. Ironically, fresh meat and fish, inconvenient to wrap in Prada paper, saw poor business, despite being typically in high demand. Some internet celebrities, after taking photos with a bunch of celery, would throw it away not far from the market, keeping only the Prada wrapping paper. This extreme vanity left the hardworking and not so well paid cleaners in astonishment. In a surprising twist at a kindergarten entrance, a woman dressed in a centrally appealing short skirt, black stockings, and high heels, showcasing her shoulders and legs, stood out among the ordinary parents picking up their children. On social media, she claimed to be picking up her nephew, yet onlookers observed her changing outfits multiple times for video shoots by her assistant, without actually picking up any child. This phenomenon has been humorously termed as kindergarten beauty. Some individuals donning tight revealing dresses and high heels venture into farmlands, posing in attire more suited for office environment, beauty pageants, or costume balls, engaging in agricultural tasks like driving tractors or planting rice. This striking contrast between their glamorous appearance and the rustic setting has been labeled as farmer beauty. Furthermore, there are those who brave the cold in ski resorts wearing only tank tops, crop tops, or even bikinis, focusing on showcasing their figures rather than skiing, aptly named snow beauty. Others publicly share their recent divorces, flaunting their independence along with their divorce certificates and selfies, known as divorce beauty. Some persist in wearing chongsams with revealing cuts to emphasize their sexuality, termed chongsam beauty. Highly educated individuals returning from abroad to teach in remote, challenging regions are admired as volunteer teacher beauty. And those claiming to have a vast social media following while dining and drinking for free under the guise of promotion are called dining beauty. The Yuan universe in China continues to expand with unlimited creativity, demonstrating that no one can stop the surge of ingenuity among Chinese internet celebrities in attracting followers. Whether it's flaunting wealth, showcasing a serene lifestyle far from the madding crowd, or adopting the guise of common folk by engaging in agricultural work, these influencers follow a similar playbook. By creating a stark contrast between their appearance, lifestyle, and the settings they choose, they aim to captivate their audience, with some gaining over 110,000 followers from just five videos. This trend, known as the Yuan economy, thrives on the market's willingness to pay for beauty and stories, despite the evident contrivance and excessive packaging. The so-called Yuan economy, wrapped in meticulous beauty enhancement and role design, is essentially a real-life scripted murder, deceiving followers out of their tears, money, and even health. The reliability, safety, and certification of products sold through fabricated scenarios and live streams or other online marketing strategies are highly questionable. Under the governance of the Chinese Communist Party, CCP, consumers often bear the consequences of impulsive purchases influenced by these yuan trends, with little assurance of rights protection due to the high cost of litigation. State media outlets like CCTV and the Workers Daily have expressed outrage, specifically targeting phenomena such as Buddha Yuan for their apparent detachment from worldly desires, which in reality mask a torrent of materialism. Regardless of the type of Yuan economy, once it involves issues of product quality and safety that affect genuine consumer rights, Regulatory bodies cannot remain idle and need to make a show on the surface that they are actually doing something concrete. The CCP's Cyberspace Administration and Ministry of Public Security, among others, have jointly issued guidelines for managing online live marketing, aiming to regulate the responsibilities of all parties involved and establish daily monitoring duties for live marketing platforms. Major short video platforms have already started penalizing and cleaning up content related to various Yuan phenomena. However, the critique by official CCP media and the cleaning up of social media platforms cannot erase the worship of luxurious lifestyles. 
as the former Premier Li Keqiang revealed. Our per capita annual income is 30,000 yuan, but there are 600 million people whose monthly income is just 1,000 yuan. With 1,000 yuan, it might be difficult even to rent a house in a medium-sized city. According to a report released by China International Capital Corporation, the average wealth of China's population of 1.4 billion is only 23,000 yuan, accounting for 92.6% of the population. The middle class has an average wealth of 1.1 million yuan, making up 7% of the population. The affluent class boasts an average wealth of 63 million yuan, representing 0.3% of the population. The average wealth of the affluent class is 57 times that of the middle class, and over 2,700 times that of the impoverished population. The income disparity between the middle and affluent classes in China far exceeds that of the United States and Japan, illustrating the extreme wealth disparity under the governance of the Chinese Communist Party. The gap is so vast it surpasses imagination, fueling both direct and alternative forms of wealth flaunting on the Chinese internet, which caters to and satisfies the curiosity and fantasies of those unaccustomed to such class distinctions. In societies where wealth disparity and injustice prevail, materialism becomes increasingly popular. Not only do the numerous fans idolize wealth, but these pseudo-socialites essentially demonstrate the correct way to worship money. Meanwhile, the wealthy elites within the ruling party position themselves as purveyors of positive energy, sternly criticizing materialism and ostentation. This hypocrisy highlights a profound distortion of values within the Chinese society. In September 2021, an editorial on China Central Television's website titled These Buddha Beauties Are Insatiable lashed out at Buddha Beauties, depicting them as vixens who have sneaked into Buddhism. However, can China's so-called Buddhist sanctuaries still be considered sacred and pure? In Fujian province, locals have taken over 90% of the temples, operating them entirely on a commercial basis, engaging in the high-priced sale of incense and reaping exorbitant profits. This open secret within China's tourism and religious circles, involving scams far surpassing those of the Buddha beauties in scale, impact, and harm, rarely receives criticism from official media, and is little known within China itself. This topic warrants its own detailed discussion and will not be elaborated upon here. While the contrived actions of the Buddha beauties to attract internet traffic are certainly deserving of criticism, the question arises, is the harsh criticism directed at them simply because they are an easy target without powerful backings? Moreover, when it comes to deceiving and exploiting the public, what beauty or temple could possibly outdo the autocratic rulers of the Chinese Communist Party? For instance, Xi Jinping's anti-corruption campaign has indeed punished numerous corrupt officials. Yet, Xi himself has openly amassed royalties amounting to hundreds of millions. His sister and brother made a fortune during the COVID-19 pandemic. His cousin has been involved in high-profile money laundering in Australia and the widespread corruption of the Xi family, both domestically and internationally, has been well documented. In a twist of events, amidst media and public backlash, several individuals with their photos implicated in media reports clarified their situations on social media. A Weibo blogger posted medical reports and a lawyer statement indicating that the Health Times had used her photo and falsely accused her of faking illness for profit. Another person clarified that their photo was merely to document their treatment process and never intended for it to be misused. Due to the ordeal, she has been on the receiving end of cyberbullying. Another Weibo blogger clarified that her photo was taken at the Ever Found Home, shared on popular social media Xiao Hongshu simply because she found the courtyard beautiful, yet was falsely accused of being a Buddha beauty. These individuals were not promoting products through their illnesses or affiliating with temples. Instead, it appears that those who misused their photos did so to generate traffic. While the full truth may still be uncertain, what is clear is that mainstream opinion has been targeting Buddha beauties and illness beauties, and stigmatizing the entire group in one fell swoop.
The detrimental effects of this stigmatization are borne by all young women who may be sincerely seeking solace in Buddhism or merely enjoying sharing related content on social media. A 2016 study by Norton Security found that nearly half of the 1,000 surveyed had experienced some form of abuse or harassment online, with women under 30 accounting for 76% of these incidents. Many studies have shown that women choose to conceal their identities online to avoid being subjected to abuse. When accusations against Buddha beauties and illness beauties became indiscriminate attacks, They and even more women face countless sarcastic abuses and online violence, forcing them to self censor. The detrimental side effects of this are by no means less significant than a few suspected of scamming traffic. Who is right or wrong is not immediately clear, but that is not the main point. The key question is why such online chaos arises in China. There is a Chinese saying only the officials are allowed to light fires. While the common people are not allowed to light lamps, indicating that those in power can act recklessly, while ordinary people are restricted even in legitimate activities. This double standard by the CCP leads to social chaos and persistent issues. As China's economy continues to decline, the content created by internet celebrities increasingly caters to the darker aspects of human nature, such as voyeurism, fantasizing, and gossip. While fans satisfy their desires and internet celebrities harvest traffic and monetize, the wealthy and internet celebrities become hunters and prey to each other, simply fulfilling each other's needs. However, the rulers could not stand idly by and took on the role of moral critics. Instead of prioritizing the establishment of a legal framework, the CCP engaged in moral discourse, including the strong criticism of various yuans as fox spirits. In instances where questions of moral integrity arise within its ranks, the CCP often shifts the conversation to national issues, for example, arguing against the public disclosure of officials' private wealth. Amid economic challenges, which have prompted many to look for opportunities online, the CCP reminds the public that the internet is not beyond the law. Operating from an authoritarian perspective, The CCP frequently adopts a moralistic stance. This raises questions about how ordinary citizens navigate their lives and find opportunities for growth in such an environment. What underlies the emergence of the Yuan universe phenomenon in China? The digital influencer economy empowers average women to draw followers and accumulate views by leveraging their looks and bodies, thereby overcoming barriers to move upward in social class. This model has become increasingly popular, leading to fierce competition. Coupled with insufficient regulatory oversight, this phenomenon has naturally evolved due to social and economic demands. The Chinese proverb, if the upper beam is not straight, the lower beam will be crooked, suggests that the behavior of those in leadership influences those below them. This seems to mirror the current state of Chinese society, where leadership, represented by the CCP, Engages in practices that have led to societal engagement in materialism and consumerism. While it's straightforward to criticize the insatiability of internet celebrities within the Yuan universe, it might be more pertinent to question the broader issue of systemic corruption. The absence of significant action by the ruler of the law, media, and public opinion raises further questions about the mechanisms of accountability and reform in society.